You know, we can learn a lot in life, and I, I would suggest that we as a human race have learned a lot as a result of the Fast and Furious franchise. We've learned that a car can go to outer space. We learned that flexing your muscles will make bullets miss you. And we learned that one man with the power of family can, with his bare arms, grab a chain and pull concrete buildings down. Yes, there are a lot of lessons to be learned. Uh, but apparently one of the lessons isn't how to not have a big second weekend drop. Now, of course, Fast X, the newest installment of the Fast and Furious uh, franchise, a movie that I believe is terrible, but has some real fun in it at the same time. Yes, those two things can be true at the same time. Uh, came out last week too, not as big of an opening weekend as they were hoping for, but the real, you know, legitimacy of the film was going to be seen in its second weekend. And most normally, what you want to see in a big Hollywood film is a second weekend drop of somewhere between 50 and 60%. Like anything less than a 50% drop is amazing. Anything more than a 60% drop is concerning. So where was Fast X going to fall in its second weekend drop off? Well, it falls under the concerning category as according to reports and official box office numbers, Fast X has dropped 65.7% in its second weekend, pulling in only $23 million domestically on its second weekend. As we compare that to the last number of Fast and Furious films, uh, it's a growing trend. Fast 7 opened to $147 million, dropped 59.5%, which is a, actually a really good drop, When especially you consider the fact that the bigger movies open with that means more people have seen it opening weekend, so you might expect a little bit of a higher second weekend drop-off. The fact that Fast 7 opened to almost $150 million and still had an under 60% drop was fantastic. Well, then Fast 8 opened to $98 million and had a 61.1% drop, so not as great. Fast 9, which I believe is probably the worst film in the franchise, it's a dreadful, dreadful, awful movie, opened to $70 million and took an insanely large 67.2% drop. Now, they were really hoping to see that turn around, but again, as we see, Fast X opened to a domestic opening of $67 million. This weekend pulled in 23, which represents a full 65.7% drop. Not as big of a drop as Fast 9, but still pretty poor. Now it needs to be pointed out here that despite the fact that it has had such a significant drop and really didn't have that big of an opening per se, worldwide, Fast X has already pulled in a little over a half a billion dollars, which is pretty good, but will it still break even? We'll talk about that in another video a little bit later today. So the question becomes why? Why did Fast X have such a large second weekend drop? Uh, compared to some of the other films other than Fast 9, which had a bigger one. I want to suggest four things, all right? Four potential reasons why Fast X took such a big second weekend drop. Number one, Fast 9 was terrible. And I think the terribleness of Fast 9, because that is a truly wretched film. And I say this as a Fast and Furious franchise fan. I like this franchise. 9 was garbage. And I think... The effects of nine, <laughs> there you go. How did that not make a billion dollars? <laughs> Ludacris and Tyrese go into space. Nos into space. With some duct tape and a car. Anyway, I think that movie was so bad that it was bound to impact Fast X, not just in its opening, but over its longer term run. So I think that's one reason. The second reason is Fast 10, Fast X is just not that good. Like, while there is fun to be had in this movie, terrific action, great fight sequences, a wonderful villain with Jason Momoa, there's definitely some good upside to this film. And I think a lot of people have enjoyed the film, but they just barely enjoyed it. Like, they like it, but didn't love it. And because the movie was not a better movie, less people were inclined to run out to watch it again, and less people were inclined to run out and tell their friends, you got to go see this movie, hence you got a 65, almost 66% drop. The third reason, I think, isn't as big, but it's a part of it. I don't think it's a big coincidence that we've seen this franchise take a big dip in the box office in 9 and 10, and these were the two movies that they did without Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Now, look, it's not like put Dwayne The Rock Johnson in any movie and it's going to be a mega hit, Black Adam, anybody? <laughs> but 
<laughs> the reality is you put Dwayne Johnson in movies, normally those movies make a lot more money than they would have otherwise. So I, I'm not saying it is the factor, but I think you'd be a little bit naive not to at least acknowledge that all of a sudden the lack of one of the biggest movie stars in the world being in the films uh, kind of resulted in them taking a little bit of a box office drop. I think the main reason, though, we saw Fast X take a 60, almost 66% drop is the fact that there was a little half fish girl that came along. Little Mermaid opened. And over the Memorial Day weekend, Little Mermaid took in 118 million box office dollars. That, that's a lot of people not available to go see Fast X now. Yep. So, I mean, those are a, a bunch of the reasons. Jonathan, you got it. And if I, any of those that I point out, do you have something else you'd point your finger at if you were going to say, here's the magic bullet that kind of killed the second weekend of Fast X? Um, I mean, I'm kind of along the same lines. I do think that this right here definitely killed the momentum and it was already struggling. I feel like box office wise, it was, it was already an uphill battle coming off of, of nine. Uh, one other thing I'll say is I was in a sports bar this weekend and uh, a Fast 10 trailer came out. All right. It's already been out a week. So this is a trailer pushing for second weekend. So right. a lot of these people, I could tell by their expression, hadn't even seen it. And I kind of feel like this is the vast X demographic. Uh, you know, sports people, people that like booms and bangs and stuff like that. And you should have seen the reactions looking up at the trailer. People were like, <laughs> like when he goes over the goes over the 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 uh, the bridge, the, br the, the dam. bridge, the dam. They're like looking at each other, like. Now, hey, people were scoffing at it. Let, let's let's keep in mind it still has made just a, just a hair over five hundred million. But I think those are like, the people that were gonna. They, those that's your diehard like the people in this figure here that sixty seven. That's your diehard fan, and they've seen it now. And yeah, that's it. and they didn't see it again. Ray, you got one that you point your finger at. Well, I think that um, it's just like people are just getting insulted by this franchise. You know, <laughs> like I I think there's a certain line that you draw where people's intelligence gets questioned. You know what I mean? And that it's like the Transformers. You know, Yeah, they the Transformers kept, crossed that line. They kept just giving us crap, and we kept eating it. I think this one, it's, it's happening the same way. And plus, I don't know if it's... I feel this genre, like, is hot right now. Like, this genre, like... Just bombastic action you, kind of you, genre. No, no, no. Stuff. Just like the whole racing and whatever. Oh yeah. Maybe, maybe it should have been a move towards more closer to the summer. I mean, it's surrounded by a lot of good movies. Who's gonna pick crap over good movies? That's all, all. That's been coming out. That's been out. That's still in theaters. I mean, if you hear that a movie's bad, you're not gonna be like, oh, you're gonna skip Little Mermaid or something to watch it. So I think it's time it's gone. It's it's all downhill from here. I'm sorry. I love you, Vin Diesel. I love I love your speech at CinemaCon. You won my heart forever. But we got to step up a little bit, a little bit the story-wise. Just a little bit, and you, you'll be back there. Guys, we want to thank a sponsor of this video, Rocket Money. The average person has around 12 paid subscriptions. Think about that. If you think you're only subscribed to a handful of services, you might want to double check. With Rocket Money, you can quickly identify and cancel all of your unwanted subscriptions. Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill, is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitor your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Rocket Money will quickly and easily identify your subscriptions for you so you can stop paying for the ones you don't want and don't even use. Simply find the subscription you don't want and press cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. No more long hold times with customer service or tedious emailing back and forth. Rocket Money makes canceling subscriptions as easy as the click of a button. My wife Ann and I moved out of Burbank two years ago and one of the first things I discovered when I loaded up Rocket Money was that I was still paying for a gym membership I haven't even been to in Burbank in two years. So stop throwing away your money. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to Rocket rocketmoney.com slash campia that's rocketmoney.com slash campia rocketmoney.com slash campia all right guys the question is for you what do you think about this fast x has taken a really not so great 65.7 percent drop in its second weekend what would you personally attribute that to is it something to do is it little mermaid is that what kept people away was it the 
terribleness of Fast 9? Was it the quality of this movie in itself? Was it the lack of Dwayne The Rock Johnson? There could be one or several different reasons. It's probably a collection of a bunch of them. What do you blame it on mostly? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Hey guys, thanks a lot for watching our video. Make sure you click the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel. And by the way, we do the John Campy Show podcast every day. So go and subscribe to it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or whatever your favorite podcasting app of choice is.